Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Matthew Miller. I am the Fedora project leader. And this is my uh, going into my 10th year of being the project leader. And this is my 11th time I'm presenting a keynote at Flock or Nest conference because this is a redo because the stream cut off at the beginning of the other time. So I thought, yeah, there's some important stuff at the beginning. We need to make sure that goes. And if I'm going to do the beginning, I might as well do the whole thing. We'll see how it goes the second time around. You can decide if it's better or worse. I, uh, I make up a lot of it as I go along, so we'll see how it comes out. Um, yeah, so over those 10 years, there's been a lot of, a lot of ups and downs and uh, some of, a lot more ups than downs, I think. I think it's been generally a good time in Fedora. Uh, right now, uh, there's this saying, um, given somebody says an ancient curse, but it's not actually ancient. It's something that some British guy made up in the, I don't know, 19th century or so. And I thought I'd, uh, I thought I'd give Terry Pratchett, another, another um, British guy, the, the credit for it here. Uh, but yeah, uh, sometimes having a lot of stuff going on can be very stressful. And uh, this is kind of how it, feels to me in the world overall right now. We've got war, disease, famine, basically all of the horsemen of the apocalypse. And if heat waves weren't in the original set, I think that they have kind of ridden up very quickly and taken over whichever the other fourth horseman was um, to be right in the forefront of the charge. So that's kind of a lot. And then, of course, closer, closer to us, uh, Red Hat has been going through you know, corporate things. We had big cuts in our travel budget. I was afraid we would not be able to get anyone here to this conference at all. It actually turned out a very good turnout. Um, it's kind of weird to be giving this at the end of the, rather than the beginning, so I can look back over the conference. Um, there were, uh, when I checked at the beginning, I should have gotten the number just for this, but there were like 130 registrations, which isn't the biggest that we've had. Yeah. Oh, more than that. Okay. I'll check it out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mo's looking it up for me here. Yeah. So we, we had we had good turnout, much better than I was worried. It's not the biggest we've ever had, but it was great, and we had people here together, and so that was that was nice. Uh, I was worried about that, um, but uh, we had earlier scheduled this to be planned this to be in Detroit, in the United States, but visa problems there looked like it wasn't we weren't going to get people there if that happened, and then. We moved it to Ireland um, for hopefully better visa uh, times, um, but then it turned out a bunch of people at the last minute couldn't come here because of that, so that was, uh, again, worries. Uh, and then uh, there were the layoffs at Red Hat, which that sucked for all of us at Red Hat. Um, it affected company morale, and it had a direct impact on Fedora, and you know that not just Red Hatters' morale, but everybody in the community really felt hurt by that. So that uh, added to this uh, really just uh, interesting times in not the good way, I guess. Uh, then uh, this last month, all of the things going on CentOS. So and a lot of worry coming out of that from people, you know, in the community and a lot of Fedora users and people on the internet are kind of casually looking and be like, what's what's the pattern here? Is Fedora next? Um, and not Fedora Next, or earlier strategy, Fedora Next, and you know, bad, something bad happening to us. Um, yeah, so all that's going on, and that's all it's kind of in the background here. And I hope that we can kind of uh, let that fade into being background noise. I don't mean to diminish the importance of all of those you know, world crisis things, or you know, how, how that things at Red Hat have affected all of us. Um, but there are, none of these are things that we in Fedora can do anything directly about. There's this kind of you know, hiss in the background, and I hope that we can we can focus on the things that we can deal with, um, and uh, kind of fade into this peaceful universe. At least this is a background that Mo drew here uh, during the COVID COVID lockdown times. Did the Fedora wallpaper, uh, desktop wallpaper, and I really liked it, especially for that time. It's kind of a um, place where we can kind of relax and remember, you know, Fedora is bigger than Red Hat. I love that they pay me full time to work on things, and I love that they provide all the resources uh, for Fedora. A lot of resources, um, but really, like all of us coming together to be Fedorians, to be Fedora friends, uh, you know, Fedora family, 
uh, no matter who we work for, like that's, that's what Fedora is about. That's, it's bigger than all that, and hopefully even in that chaotic world, we can find this peaceful place and then, though, even more than just finding this peace and respite from it all, a fedora should be a place where we can do this thing we want to do and to build this world, a world where everyone benefits from free and open source software that's built by inclusive, welcoming, and open-minded communities. That's, that's the Fedora Project vision, and I really hope that um, we, can, we can get to that utopia, and I have a lot of optimism for how things are going. Uh, this is a picture from a NASA 1970s, like how is the future gonna look, what are space stations gonna be like, that I loved as a child and still love. They're on the internet today, they publish these, and it's, it, that's, to me, that symbolizes um, that utopian future. Um, to other people, you may have your own picture of it, but that's, that, that's what I mean by this here. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, how are we doing towards that? Uh, one of the things we've been doing the last few years is a survey of Fedora users and Fedora contributors um, that we could put out there in general and tried to make as scientific as possible. It's an anonymous survey where people can give feedback on different questions we've designed. And um, this just finished up on the end of July, so it's hot off the presses. In fact, when I was working on this talk, I actually didn't know what these numbers were gonna be until the last minute. And so I actually stayed up late and kind of redid things because there were different ways things were gonna go. So, um, oh, hey, what have I pressed? A wrong button on the remote. There we go, okay, perfect. Solve problems, computers are great. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the first time we did it, um, satisfaction survey, and this came back really very high, an average of 4.2 of the, you know, out of five of how satisfied people are, so things in the bottom are good there. Um, and that year, there was about 400 respondents in every category, 800 total, so pretty good response rate, too, that we thought. Um, the next year, we got about 20% more contributor responses and about three times the number of user responses, so almost 2,000 responses overall. Um, and basically the average uh, went f uh, to 4.3, so things were getting better, looking up. Now, um, with all of that backdrop of the apocalyptic things and everything else, and you know, especially all of the online negativity that was coming from every direction, it felt like, uh, over the last month, I thought, okay, this is gonna be, this might be rough. Um, but, one of the things I didn't even mention there that we had a uh, change proposal, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit, which was very contentious, and I really was a, a worried that there'd be a lot of people who came in to just, you know, trash us on this, and you know, um, uh, so I thought, was it gonna be, you know, is the average of two now, or I, I don't know. But um, it turns out, uh, they love us. They they really love us. I guess that's the thing. No, um, we th we actually got really good response on here. This is up again about seventy percent overall. So almost three thousand responses this time, um, and the average score went down a tiny bit. It drops to you know, four point two, back to where it was two years ago. But that's just kind of you know, it, I would love to see it all going up and up and up, but. Uh, I think it's fair, room, some room for improvement there. We're in, in the fours and we can grow and I got optimism for that and it was really nice to see these positive growing numbers here uh, continuing. So I think we actually really are in a good place and we ha do have that room to improve and we, uh, that, that's what we wanna work on here. Uh, I'm gonna look specifically at the year over year change here in each things. that's something I thought was kind of fun. Uh, we actually had, uh, zero contributors who rated us at the lowest, number one, this year. And by contributor, in this case, it is people who only identified as a user when they were asked of the different ways they participate in the project. So a lot of the people who are contributors are users as well, but that's the, the split here. Um, but so there's no one who said that they were involved at more than a user level who said they had you know, no satisfaction. Um, and it could be that we just you know, lost those uh, people there. Um, there were six people last year who said that. Um, but I noticed that last year there have been eight people who said that we were score two. And this year it's up by six, 14. So I hope that we converted all of those six people to just a little bit, a little bit more optimism. Uh, and we'll see how that continues as we go on. Uh, another indicator here, just, um, this is uh, from a, the introduce yourself threads that uh, community members have started on the Fedora discussion forum. And this is basically, you know, show up, say hello, and 
um, maybe somebody sits a little back and just a little bit about yourself. And it's kind of neat to see this just sort of organically grow year over year with more people participating and more messages. Uh, if you are watching this and haven't said hello, please join. Uh, if, just, if you've been around Fedora for a long time or if you're brand new, it's a great place to just drop in and you know, um, start talking to people. Um, and uh, I, I really see this as kind of a sign of health when a community is, is, just has that sort of natural engagement there and that that's growing. Uh, the place to go is in the water cooler section of our forum, which is sort of the, the metaphorical um, thing where back when people used to go into offices all the time, uh, when you want a little break, you just go and get some water and there'd be somebody else standing around where the water bubbler is and you'd, you know, chit chat a little bit. So this is kind of our chit chat section of the forum there. Uh, go there. Uh, there's also an introduction section in our uh, Fedora space on matrix, so chat.fedoraproject.org. Uh, we've um, actually seen you know, increased activity there as well. It actually been so quiet for a while, I just uh, was thinking about starting a conversation about shutting that down because an empty introductions room is kind of embarrassing, but it actually started picking up. So thank you for everybody engaging there as well. That's another place to do this kind of thing. I don't have a chart for that one, but yeah, it's a... Um, okay, so this is uh, a section where I'm gonna show some other metrics which are about our the, the Fedora uh, stats on, the, the metrics we have on the number of systems running out there in the world. And I show a dinosaur here because we do not do any sort of invasive tracking. This is all kind of an observation level thing. So it's sort of like doing an archeological dig is something that you know, is a millions of years of reserve, hundreds of millions of years, and you can't really reconstruct exactly, you can have a theory about how you're putting things back together. So Steven Smugin, who's one of the people who's worked on this and done a lot of work on making that system work over the years, um, I've, uh, joke about this dinosaur thing, and this is, the dinosaur represents uncertainty, is basically what I'm saying here. Um, so, uh, here is the latest things from DNF Count Me, per release, per release, and I was like, wait a minute, I've been, that, that looks bad, this should be going up and to the right, something is wrong here. So, actually, um, something is wrong here, and, I, and uh, it's one of the, I don't have as many graphs about this as I often do in my talk because I found some bugs. Here, there's definitely a bug in the way DNF Count Me is recording systems, um, their system age, and there seems to be something else as well. Because as I was digging into this, I actually noticed so this is another view of the same data uh, sliced by by variant, and each of the releases at their peak. Um, the latest one here actually hasn't reached its peak yet because it isn't that usually is right before the next release, so that will still grow, but you can still see it's not really the great trend. But I noticed that um, this is only desktop systems that are going down. So uh, all the RPM OS tree-based things are going up, um, including the desktops, and uh, server, cloud, those are also going up if I break them out, but the desktop ones are going down, which is weird. So I think there's some kind of bug there. And so I started looking into the older method of tracking where you just count the number of IP addresses that show up in the mirror every day. At, sorry, and I shouldn't say tracking because there is no system tracking here. This is just kind of counts overall. So the other uh, older counting method. Um, and it happens that there is almost a two to one correlation here. If you just double the height of the old line, it, it hits the new one. And that's, it's so close to a factor of two that I thought, are we double counting? And I had people check this, like double check this so many times. Uh, we're pretty confident that that's just actually what the, the correlation factor is. And there's, there's reasons for that that we can talk about that it might be reasonable. Basically, uh, between behind every network, uh, between everybody's home uh, home router or whatever, on average, there's two systems, or there may be some big places where there are uh, a lot of systems behind one network address, translation address, or whatever. So we'll, we'll see what that is. But you can see that like there's a pretty good correlation there for those releases. Um, pretty magical. I'm I'm not really actually can like it still might be a a count, double counting error, and I don't really like the the actual numbers aren't really important to me. Even if it's double counting, it's kind of the, the trend that matters. So the trend matches in both cases here, which makes sense. But if I look now at the more recent releases, you can see it at the very beginning, it works, and then all of a sudden the DNF count me kind of flops off, which is really strange. Um, and I think it might have something to do with some bug in the way that is working in DNF. So I didn't dig much further into this, but I am, um, you know, I don't want to just be like, oh, I'm looking, picking the numbers that I want to see, 
but I think there's pretty good reason to believe that the more optimistic numbers here are actually more reflective of reality. Well, we'll see. Next time around, I may be like, well, that turned out there's something terrible. Um, that's part of the, the fun of doing archaeology, and you do more research, and you find out more things, but that's, that's where that is there. Uh, yeah, sorry, uncertain results. Um, if I didn't traditionally do this in my state of Fedora, I might have just skipped the whole thing, but that would have been weird. So here's, here's the transparent, that's what I've got. Um, I, think it's, I think it's mostly okay. This is a pause for water segue here. So, um, in other news, um, exciting things that have happened recently in Fedora. Uh, if you followed all the state of Fedora talks I've done, you've heard me say for years that having most of our activity on mailing lists and on IRC hides our activity. It buries it under something where most people who are you know, using the internet today on their phones or <laughs> however are not really seeing or even able to participate in everything that's going on. And there is a lot going on in the project. Uh, so part of this, uh, moving our chat you know, from IRC to Matrix, which has a much a lower barrier to entry um, and kind of more like what people are used to in modern chat apps. That's been, that's been one big improvement. And I'm also hoping we can move a lot of our mailing list discussions to uh, discussion.fedoraproject.org, which is a discourse-based forum. Um, I think in doing that, uh, it'll be more obvious that we're alive as a project. And in fact, it will help us be more alive. We are selecting out a lot of possible participants for bad reasons. Uh, it, we want to make sure we can bring people who have been engaged in the project or used to those along as well. We actually had a big long session here. Again, this is the benefit of doing my, my keynote at the end of the conference. We had a big long session talking to people about how that will work. Um, one of the things is we've got to make sure we bring the content to the new platform. It's uh, my, pointed out to me, Mo is right here in the front row, so that's why I'm talk, talking about her all the time. Uh, but she pointed out to me that it's, you know, it is about the content and, and having pe reasons for people to be there. It's a social problem more than a technical problem, can't be solved with technology. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to do to do that is bring our change proposals there where we talk about you know, what's gonna be different in the next release of Fedora. Uh, we traditionally talked about those on the Fedora Devel mailing list. I wanted more visibility, I wanted more participation, more feedback, more engagement. So uh, we had uh, the first change proposal for Fedora Linux 40. We decided to do that on the discussion forum. And how did that go? Well, um, there's another ancient curse. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, we had um, 1,378 posts in less than a month on this topic, and most of those were in the first week and over the weekend. Um, I, you can see the numbers in orange there on the slides. I probably should have put little fire graphics on them or something to make the, show how dramatic it was, but it was, it, it probably kind of felt on fire or felt, you know, kind of like this, another, another view. Uh, people got really upset, and a lot of people were coming in uh, you know, we got a lot of accusations that this was decided in the back room and that IBM had made us, you know, was making these decisions and forcing it on the users who didn't want any of this stuff. And I realized that a lot of the people coming in here were not necessarily new to Fedora as a user, but were new to this process. So a lot of people actually said, you know, I've been using Fedora for 20 years and this is the first time I've spoken up in one of these changes. So they really felt upset about it. And I, I realized that this is kind of a thing that we had the same problem with our release process where people you know, see every time we are like, oh, we've got, to, we've got to slip the release date from what we'd planned uh, to a later date. And like, oh no, is Fedora, you know, they don't have their act together. Really, like that's a normal part of software development. Like every, every schedule is optimistic, right? And so usually what people do is they just don't tell you what the release date is and surprise, it's done when it's done. And you know, so even like uh, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux schedule, that's you know, they, they they tell you when it's ready, not when, not what's going on behind the scenes. And in Fedora, we show what's going on behind the scenes, and it's the same thing with changes. We don't have that back room. All of these things are done in the open, in public, and uh, so this is this is not a done deal kind of thing. This was people bringing it 
This is a proposal they're working on. It happened, you know, I, I had seen it before if they're working on it, but most people uh, and FESCO, the, in, the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee that makes the decisions, you, this is the first time they're seeing it. So uh, it wasn't that backroom deal, but that's what people expected when they came in because you know, they're used to big companies when making, making these decisions in, and then it's a, it is a done deal and basically as a user, all you can do is go to their forum and just light that up and put all the complaints you can in place and get all your friends to talk about how bad it is and respond to everything with anger. And you're not expecting the people who are making the decision to even listen. Maybe some forum manager person will collect things up and then it ends up being a, like, this is the weight and the heat and the anger and that's how, like, you can get your feedback. Which, like, that's not our process at all. And a lot of people commented actually that they were upset that this Fedora would even consider such a thing, that this could even be proposed. So that, that upset me, but in a different way, because Fedora is a big collaborative project. And I hope most of the people in the room, I hope most of the people listening know and understand this already, but I want to talk about it because it is such an important thing. Fedora tries new things. That's part of who we are. Uh, We've got, we've got uh, freedom as our core value, and I think uh, a lot of people you know, identify privacy and uh, digital privacy as part of the free software, open source software. You know, it's, one, it's part of that value, and I think that's true in Fedora. Uh, we also have values for features and first, so we want to try new things. That's really important. And most crucially, we are friends all working together. It doesn't mean we think the same, but it has to be safe to propose things that other people might disagree with. Like, people have strong opinions on things, but uh, that's okay. We don't always have to agree, but we're always working together towards this common goal to make this world, that utopian world, like, you know, um, where everyone benefits from free and open source software, and it's built by inclusive, welcoming, and open-minded communities. And that's what we have to be in order to do this. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what we need. And so I don't know if people uh, recognize the painting here. This is uh, the School of Athens, Socrates. Um, and so this is how that turned out. Um, so we need it to be safe even when people think a proposal is annoying or something is terrible or even dangerous, if something might corrupt the youth. Like, we've got to make room for those proposals because we've got to be able to talk about them. Uh, so uh, we're going to continue uh, trying to do this in the open. We could instead bring this into some sort of back room. We could put it back to the mailing lists, or we could use features to make it so that, you know, only people who have been active in the project for, for a certain level or certain meet certain other thresholds can participate or even see the discussion at a certain point. We could do those things, but I really don't want to. I think that transparency. I think it's great that we had more people involved in this. Uh, we're gonna, gonna try some new rules this next time around. Uh, particularly, we're gonna have zero tolerance for personal attacks, which is generally what we do in Fedora anyways. But this time, um, because we hadn't really strongly level set the expectations, we were kind of lenient on a lot of posts that where you could see someone was really angry and they wanted to express themselves and they also happened to you know, say that the person was you know, something bad about the person proposing it, including that uh, the people proposing it you know, aren't, don't have Fedora's best interests in mind, that they are acting in bad faith. And those, are, those are a form of personal attack that kind of undermines, undermines how we collaborate in Fedora. So, uh, this next time around, we're going to hide those as a moderation thing, they, uh, which gives you a chance to edit it. Uh, we would like to have hear your opinion, but you've got to be part of the process, part of Fedora, and, and work in a collaborative way. It doesn't mean the, there should be dissent. We want to hear all of the sides, but you can, you can make your point without making personal attacks and conspiracy theories and all of those things. Uh, we're also having, in addition to the, the rules, we're inter we have a uh, video introducing the process and kind of a, some more background presented to people, and we'll see how that goes the next time. So uh, we'll refine from that, and hopefully things will get better and better, and you know, no one will have to drink the hemlock in the end, and um, we'll be able to continue doing Fedora in an open and transparent way and make that grow and grow. Okay, uh, so 
that was m maybe a little bit, yeah. I got excited. I got excited the first time I did this. I got excited about the second time. I'm, I'm passionate about that. It's really important to Fedora. Um, another thing, I'd mentioned Red Hat's layoffs before, and Red Hat, well, layoffs really sucked. I, I won't go into it in detail because uh, I, there's not really a lot I can say. It's what it really is, those things out of our control. Um, and yeah, this is not like, not, don't take anything I'm saying as like official Red Hat or whatever, there's um, observations. It, it seems that the cuts really targeted um, program manager roles at the company. There are a lot of people uh, who had that title in various ways and actually even are the people in open source, the open source program office who are um, not doing what we think of as program management in any way, uh, actually had their had um, their roles coded as program manager, which I don't know, there might be some, like, metadata is important to everybody, let's get our labels right. Uh, but, um, yeah, so it, it, it kind of did feel like, oh, like, wow, Fedora's in the crosshairs here, this really, like, hit, hit. but I, I don't think that was actually the case, so it really, um, it, it was miserable, but we weren't, Fedora wasn't particularly targeted, other actually important Actually, part other important projects and things that in Red Hat also have to deal with the same kind of thing. So it sucks all around. Uh, Fedora uh, has a kind of unique problem because we actually have um, the assumption that we have a funded program manager role, like codified into the Fedora Council Charter, and this really is a role that we depend on. Uh, so. And uh, Ben Cotton, who was the program manager, has a really good explanation of why this kind of thing needs to be a paid position. There's a lot of things in Fedora that, you know, amazing volunteers do wonderful things, but there are some things which we need to make sure happen, and you can never make volunteers do things. That's one of the beauty of being a volunteer. If you don't want to do something, you know, you don't have to. You can just go off and do something fun instead of that difficult thing, or just you know, keeping to a routine and so on. So this is kind of a, a role which is a lot about routine, and so that's important. And in general, kind of keeping the momentum, this idea of flywheel theory, uh, you should find Ben's book and, and look this up, it's, it's really good. Um, but yeah, so a paid role is helpful. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be Red Hat paying for that role, theoretically, but it's not like anybody else has stepped up. But luckily, uh, Mike McGrath, who's my management chain, got a new position created, which was moving heaven and earth under the circumstances in the company. Um, I think it's unfortunate that he had to do that, but like I said, layoffs suck, so I'm really glad that he did. Uh, the, because you can't hire back for a role you just cut in layoffs for you know, legal reasons and so on, this can't be the same, but it's also kind of a chance to actually reinvent what exactly we want the role to be in, the role to be, it doesn't have to be like a program manager at Red Hat in general, it can be something really, really Fedora specific. So um, we actually have an opening coming this soon, there'll be more details coming up that soon. Uh, so I am, I'm, I'm glad that, to get that support. Um, also, speaking of paid roles, one that Red Hat doesn't fund, that I've been trying to get funded for 10 years, um, we, they, we have a diversity advisor position on the council, and I really think that should also be a full-time paid role for similar reasons, and it is, it is hard work. Um, so if anybody else out there, like I said, this doesn't have to be a Red Hat role. Someone else can be paid to work on Fedora full time. I would love to see another company step up and help fund this for us. I think that would be really important because that is fundamental to who we are as Fedora as well. And I think it's an area where we could always use help and growth. So yeah, you know, challenge everybody. Yeah, um, and so finally, because this is the state of Fedora, kind of have the past, the present, and, and the future here, uh, where is Fedora going? So our last big strategic plan for the project was called Fedora Next, and that was almost a decade ago. So it's time for a new map. Uh, to have a map and a plan, first we need to know what we're aiming for. Famously, it is difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. And anybody who says that they know where technology will be in five years, like, they're flat out wrong. They probably need to go back and talk to Socrates and you know, learn a little bit about you know, the nature of knowledge. Uh, but 
Yeah, you just think about you know, how uh, technology five years ago, and like look at what's in the tech news today, and you know all of the stuff with you know, large language models. And I think you know, some people might have predicted generally, but like knowing where to invest and what's important, like that would be very hard five years in the future. So, what do we want to invest in for five years? There's going to be some specific things, but in general. We want to double the number of Fedora contributors who are active every week. So that means we have more people who are engaged and we have a really healthy project that is able to grow and change. And so whatever comes at us from a technical point of view, we'll be able to adapt and have um, you know, people who are interested and who will bring Fedora into what's needed at the time. And so that's, uh, that's the overall guiding star to double the number of contributors who are active every week. Um, I joked about this last time when I did this, so I'm gonna do it again. Uh, when I say it out loud, you can have that it is not ambiguous, but in writing, it's very hard to get double the number of contributors active every week written in a way that doesn't sound like we mean to every week double the number until we have infinite number of contributors, which would be awesome, but is probably not an achievable goal. Sorry, Till. Um, I'm gonna keep phrasing it that way because I don't have another good way to put it, but um, that's the basic goal, growth. If we, could, if we could do that exponential growth, great, but I'll be happy for doubling in, you know, the, by the end of five years, have uh, twice the number we have now. Um, so what is a contribution exactly? Um, this is the definition we came up, came up with. Um, you have to actually be doing something. It's not, you know, uh, it, 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 it's not just signing up, having a username, like that's not a contribution. Um, I like it to be a plural thing, not to be contributions, not just a drive-through, like you're making contributions before you're a contributor. It doesn't have to be a lot, it can be very little, it can be a lot of different areas, but you have something where, where you're there. Um, and it has to be something that actually kind of advances this in the direction of our project to kind of Fits, fits the mission and vision, which is very broad, but that makes it a contribution. And it's not something that's just like incidentally a benefit, um, where it is uh, something that happens to, happens to be there, but you're not, you're not really intentionally putting yourself into it. And um, that's, yeah, so this is the definition I came up with, um, and nobody has come up with a better one. If you want to help improve this, again, everything in Fedora, we are all about the incremental improvement, so if you have ideas for improving this, um, I'm open to it, but this is basically our working definition here. Um, and this is another thing I've talked about before. I will not go into detail on this, but this is kind of the framework for strategic planning and execution we use in Fedora. It is called a logic model. And the basic idea is that over here on the left side, the right side, um, we have kind of the, the abstract high level things, the guiding star and you know, your mission vision -y kind of things, the things you want to see happen, but that are not things you can actually directly affect. And then over on the left, it kind of scales down to the more concrete. And I like this model a lot because it really tries to make you connect what you're, what you're saying your high level thing is into how you're actually gonna do it and also connect what you're doing back into how it does that thing. So we've been working in Fedora Council and Fedora at Large on you know, some of the air themes that are kind of on the very high abstract side of things. Um, these are kind of the focus areas there. And I'm actually not going to go into big detail on the specific ones here. Um, a lot because you know, we're going through this process and we kind of hit against this very rough patch and kind of the momentum died out of the work we were doing in this. I was hoping to present like, here's our logic model for what we're gonna be doing at Flock this year. Uh, we were way behind on that target, but you know, um, given the state of the world, given the state of everything, I think that's okay. Uh, I think uh, it's even more important to make sure we have the community working on this and that we're you know, working towards this overall goal uh, than to have some sort of you know, perfect thing on paper. Um, but we do want to work on it. And so um, yeah, this is kind of where we lost momentum here. I, maybe a little, little time on this one here. Like there's, I'll go through the actual themes. So Fedora is for everyone. We work on accessibility. That's making sure that people, no matter you know, what accommodations they need, can use our software and participate in our project. Um, and we want to make sure that you know, Fedora Linux is available in more, peop at, in more places, on, in, more, in more systems, and that we invest more in our local communities. We want to work on mentorship. 
This is, uh, we want to both lead in how we do the distribution and what's in the distribution technically. That's basically this things here. Um, and then uh, kind of how we structure the project and, and how, how we are already kind of make the things that we're working on now kind of grow into better, stronger things. Uh, kind of the one we really haven't actually uh, talked about yet in, um, in detail is the ecosystem connections, which is kind of about how we relate to uh, other, other Linux distributions and our downstreams. So given the uh, abrupt changes in that the last uh, recent times, uh, maybe it's okay that we didn't really get to talking about that in depth yet, and we actually kind of had some of that conversation here at Flock at one of the panels. So that's, that's continuing. We'll have to figure out where that will go. Um, next down the road here, we do need to get this restarted. Like it's, um, this is an important thing to have. We want to have, have a plan that makes sense and goes where we're going. And, um, I think over the next six months, I mean, we'll come, I'm going to come up with some specific dates for that. I don't really have that right now, but I, my target overall is to have something that we really are, feel good about as a community with overall input, you know, work from the council and from community at large into having something we all feel good about that we'll present at the beginning of next year and at FOSDEM um, at the beginning of next year. Um, so in order to do that, we really need all of your help. Uh, we need feedback on these things. Uh, we need people who are you know, running for the Fedora Council and helping to work through the, the process. Um, and you think about areas that um, we, you know, the community has come up with where you would like to contribute to those or where you could be a leader. Because for each of these themes, we really want to have somebody who is the point person for that, who is kind of helping to keep that organized and making sure that that thing is moving forward. And we're going to need a lot of different people with a lot of different skills for all of that. And I also need to file a ticket with the design team to update the logo. It's oh, it's already updated? I just didn't find it. Oh, oh, that's terrible. I should have, should have checked with you. Okay, well, this is a lovely sticker sheet, and there's a better version with the right logo on it there somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, the hope is with all of that. Um, I think... We, we've had this rough patch. We've had rough patches before. Um, things are interesting, but I think that interesting, you know, can be good. We can use that, use that to advance the project, and we can use that, you know, that the times of change to move forward to where we want to be towards, you know, this utopian vision or the utopian picture that you have in mind when you think of you know, the Fedora uh, uh, ideals. Thank you, everyone. Uh, do we want to do questions in the room? There's like 10 people in this room this time. There was a lot more the first time. This is kind of like a fake audience. But go, you can applaud. Yes, loud applause. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay, we're getting a mic run over. This is kind of like a stupid question, but still. Uh, you, know, you know the saying about that. It actually well, are stupid questions, but a, I'll take even those. That's the, yeah. Will we ever have a fedora mascot? A fedora mascot. So we have, we've got a, we actually have a number of fedora mascots that are um, uh, kind of under content, uh, under, uh, I don't know what contention is the wrong word, but um, uh, hold on, let me see if I can find them just a second. Am I the Fedora mascot? I hope not. Make a blue panda, we call it panda. I was thinking of like a cow who gives like advice. Have a little like comic strip like Garfield, except with like computer problems. We're waiting for you to find things here. Yeah. A revamp of our beloved Fedora characters here. So these are some of the uh, animals that have been in Fedora, and these are actually the. Uh, so there's a panda here that is you see appearing things oh, at yeah. different places. Oh, a panda. And uh, different. So these are the current cartoon versions of these. I'm not sure I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like classic beefy still is, is, is the beefy miracle um, <laughs> version, but um, 
you know, there's, we, we got the, the new one's fine. We've got the badger. <laughs> the badger. So we've got, we've, got, we've got these here that are kind of the mascots. We don't have any, any one single mascot. And I, I, don't know, I feel like in some ways that's kind of appropriate for Fedora because I feel like getting everybody in Fedora to rally around one favorite animal would just be... Um, yeah. We've got a diversity of opinions about favorite animals in Fedora, and I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, do you want to run the mic? <laughs> Thank you. I, I have one, and it may be also pretty stupid one. Yeah, seriously. But, don't, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but uh, it, this is something that I've been uh, having some some thoughts. Uh, by definition, a project is finite. It has a start and it, it, it must have an end. You should buy Ben's book where he points out that Fedora is not actually a project but a program. Uh, the, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, Are we planning to continue being named project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I actually had a discussion on Mastodon. I'm trying to do Mastodon. It doesn't come naturally to me, uh, but uh, about yeah about that naming problem because project uh, project has a meaning in open source that people understand. That um, is, it's hard to think of something that is better. If you have a suggestion, I'm I'm open to it. I think Fedora program doesn't really sound right, even though it may be technically right in the project management sense. Um, there's also a thing that is very red hat um, that is kind of important to how this got named project in the first place, um, which is red hat works with open source projects and makes enterprise products and this project product distinction inside some of the red hat business unit and marketing is like a foundational myth that if you try and poke at, you will get um, you know, mythological level response sometimes to, to what are you doing threatening things. And in fact, at one point, when we were kind of working on the Fedora Next strategy and we wanted to, to use kind of product thinking or it's kind of about how to put polish on our outputs, the things you know, look at, like what do users want and need and put those into the things we're giving them, we kind of started wanted to talk about you know, Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server as products. And that was the one time at Red Hat that I got a friendly talking to about, you know, whether, whether this was a thing Fedora should really do or should reconsider. And so um, I, uh, we decided, you know, we don't really need to fight over that and backed away from product. I think that if we really would have fought, we probably could, but I don't think it would have been a useful outcome. Actually, the other one is about hats. This is another thing because, especially at the very beginning of uh, Fedora, they were really worried at Red Hat that it would be seen as, you know, a Red Hat endorsed product, and so they didn't want us to use hats at all in our marketing. And that actually is still a request today. And that is why, even though we are named Fedora, you don't see Fedora hats in any of the Fedora official things. Um, again, a, yeah, a polite request. That is not a fedora hat. That is a uh, Red Sox hat. <laughs> you can wear that. That's fine. Um, but that's why we don't do hats on our marketing. Again, a polite request from our sponsor that seemed not worth antagonizing. Um, to stick with the name Fedora Project, um, there's an easy way out. Uh, the end is defined by world domination. What is that? Sorry. The end is defined by world domination. By world domination, yes. We will be done when every, just like that paperclips game, when everything in the universe is turned into Fedora, then we'll be satisfied. Yes, a project is done. Um, that might not meet some of the, what? Yo, oh, just uh, you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, I think there's the um, smart, or the, the Measurable, wait, I forget what the S stands for. That's been a long conference. Uh, measurable, attainable, something specific, right? That's world domination, specific, the entire universe. Yeah, that's all right. But measurable is the entire universe. Fedora, yes. 
attain, uh, may, we may fail on the attainable on that one though. So I mean, we, we can, we, aspirational that we could call it that. That's a, all right, does anybody else have any questions or silly comments? I think we're at the silly comments phase of the conference. I think I've seen blue floors at some events. I saw it like okay, 10 years ago. I think I've seen blue fedoras over the years. You may have seen some more fashionable than me former project leader wearing a wonderful blue fedora, um, but not officially in marketing, just as a fashion choice. Oh, it right? just happens to be a blue it fedora. It happens, happens. Okay, I've yeah, seen them. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs>